Are you ready to start the carnivore diet? We have lost over 160 pounds in the last 10 months. Here are the top five things that you need to get started today, and the last one may surprise you. So the first thing you need is meat. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Well, obviously being carnivore, you're gonna eat a lot of meat. For us, I know we started shopping at places like Walmart and Hy-Vee, but due to the lack of variety of those places, we decided to go with a wholesaler like Costco and Sam's Club. Yeah, because when you're only eating meat, you wanna have lots of different kinds of variety to pick from. For us, we chose to go with Costco. They have better quality meat, it's more tender. For example, I like to buy like the four or five pound packs of New York strips that are about $9.99 a pound. And they also have things like rib roast where you can buy a giant thing of ribeyes and cut your own steaks up. So there's a lot of options there. You could also go to look at some local butchers or even try to meet up with one of your local farmers. We did not actually pursue this option because it can be a lot of money up front and we just don't have the storage space but if that is available to you sometimes that can be even cheaper than these wholesale stores all right so next you need some meal and snack ideas so some of our favorite snacks were boiled eggs homemade meatballs cheese sticks cheese crisps like parmesan crisps beef jerky meat sticks specifically the chomps brand meat sticks <laughs> those yep. are awesome grass-fed yes. grass finished sometimes you can even find some sugar-free beef jerky you can even check out carnivore kip's video for making sugar-free beef jerky from a chuck roast it is so good but having some good and quick and easy go-to snacks can help you stay on track especially during those first couple of weeks when you are weaning off the carbs so when we first started the carnivore diet we used some sugar-free sauces that helped us transition away from the standard American diet. Things like GHQ's sugar-free barbecue sauce, sugar-free ketchup, mustard. I still use hot sauce to this day and I'm <laughs> never gonna give it up. There's a lot of good options out there to help you transition. There's even like primal mm. kitchen mayo. There's lots of mm. carnivore, low carb, low sugar options out there. And just know like you can start off with those and then you can always get strict later. The most important thing is that you are making meat the center of your meals. And if you have to have some of those sauces in the beginning to help you transition, it's okay. You can always take them out later. So those are some of our favorite snacks and sauces but here are some of our favorite meals first up we have bacon cheeseburger meatballs these are a staple in our house we make them almost every week and they are perfect for meal prep throw them in the oven in the microwave or even in an air fryer they are nice and crispy and sometimes we'll even take some of that gh hughes hickory barbecue sauce sugar-free put it on top and it is so good another one of our favorite recipes especially when we were first getting started were big mac burger bowls this is just a bowl with some ground beef cheese bacon and then a Big Mac sauce which is mustard primal kitchen mayo dill pickle juice and ketchup this isn't something we eat too much anymore but it was definitely a great transition meal as we were weaning off the standard American diet another one of our staple meals that we have almost daily is dry brined steak in the oven so I just season the steak in the morning with salt pepper whatever I want to season it with and then I put it into the fridge and let it sit until I'm ready to cook I pull it out let it set at room temperature and I heat up my cast iron skill on 500 degrees in the oven and and then I sear my steak on both sides in the oven and bring it up to temperature using my meat thermometer. If you would like links to these recipes, make sure to check the description below. A couple more are things like smoked ribs and carnivore nachos, which is just pork rinds with taco meat, cheese, and sour cream, and hot sauce. Really good. Number three is a meat thermometer. And before we started the carnivore diet, I never used to cook steak. I was not confident about it at all. Uh, Y'all need to send help because Patrick's not feeling well, so I have to cook steak on the grill tonight. Send help. Oh, look. No fires. Just in, uh, there is indeed an extra fire. Until I got a meat thermometer, and yep. now I can make steak better than Patrick. No, I don't think so. <laughs> but get yourself a meat thermometer so that you can cook your meat the way you like it. Tip number four is salt and electrolytes. So before we started our journey, we would just use regular table salt from Morton, like most people do. Let's look at the ingredients on this Morton sea salt. They have sea salt, calcium silicate, dextrose, which is basically sugar, potassium iodine, yellow prusite of soda, which is anti-caking agent. Morton, especially most table salts out there, are highly refined. They strip all the good minerals out of it. There's also microplastics in regular table salt. So we decided to look at other options. And one option for sure was pink Himalayan salt. Started buying this Morton pink Himalayan salt. This is a course. If you look at the ingredients list, it's just salt. That's it, which is great. I personally like the coarse salt on top of my steak when it's done. It adds that extra texture and crunch to it. Also, I do like the Kirkland pink salt, which is just salt again and it's got the grinder on it from Costco. When I want a fine salt, I like to use Redmond's Real Salt. And Redmond's Real Salt is big in the carnivore community. A lot of people talk about it. Basically, it's mined in Utah, in the US, and they don't strip the minerals out of it. They don't refine it. It's just straight up salt. 
put in a jar. It's pure, it's raw, and it's real. There's no microplastics in it, and it's probably the best salt you can get, especially since it's mined in the US, it's pretty awesome. Make sure you salt all your food. You can never have too much salt on the carnivore diet. But also, electrolytes are extremely important, especially in the beginning, to help stave off the dreaded keto flu. Yes. Now what happens is when you're eating a regular standard American diet that's full of sugar and carbs, you retain a lot of water and you retain a lot of electrolytes. And when you're transitioning into ketosis, you pee out all that water and with it goes all the electrolytes. So mm -hmm. it's very important to try to supplement those electrolytes in the beginning during your transition. So my favorites are Element. And Element has 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. So they have a lot of sodium. Now, personally, I, I love Element. Caitlin doesn't because she thinks it's too salty, but you get your salt with it. Um, it really helps to stave off of that keto flu. Another option that we've used in the past is essential elements from Amazon. That seemed to work for us. Another option is uh, Redmond's, who makes Redmond's Real Salt, also has an uh, electrolyte mix you can get too that has zero sugar and zero carbs as well. Now, I know things like Element and Redmond's can be quite expensive for electrolytes, but you can make your own electrolytes at home for really cheap. You just need to get some real salt, some potassium chloride and magnesium chloride and mix them together. Maybe throw some lemon juice for a little bit of flavoring and you can do that at home for super cheap. All right, the last thing you need to start carnivore successfully is a mindset shift. And what helped me specifically was a 24 hour mindset. It was the mindset that I had that no matter what, I just needed to stay carnivore for 24 hours. Sometimes when we start this journey, when we have over a hundred pounds to lose, it can feel like an insurmountable task and you're looking at the next 12 months of eating only meat. And when you're just starting, that can be almost overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So for me, by breaking that huge task down into something super manageable, which is I'm only going to stay carnivore for 24 hours, that mindset shift helped me so much. And maybe for you, 24 hours is too long. Maybe for you, you need to break it down. I'm going to stay carnivore for one hour. Yep. Whatever is manageable for you, that's where you need to start. Break it down so that you can be successful. Also to go with mindset, pick a why. Like why are you doing this? Is, mm -hmm. is this something outside of yourself? Is this something in yourself? Is it a health reason? I know for me, it was my son and our family and I wanted to be around to see my children grow up and see my grandchildren. So that was my why and that's the reason I started this journey in the first place and the reason I was able to lose 100 pounds in 10 months. So those are the top five things that you need to get started on the carnivore diet. If you're starting your journey or if you're on your health journey, let us know in the comments. Make this year the year to take back your health. Yeah, if we can do it, you can definitely do it. Thank y'all for watching. We'll see y'all next time. Stay strong.